Welcome to the first episode of Script to Screen. I'm your host, Mark Bauer. Um, I've been working here at PATV as an intern for the last few weeks, and the staff here has been kind enough to help me put on a show of my own. Outside of PATV, I am a student at the University of Iowa, where I study cinema and English. And uh, I'm interested in creative writing and filmmaking, so I thought I'd uh, use this as an opportunity to talk to local writers and filmmakers and uh, get to know what they're working on. So today my guests are uh, Peter Frankman and Robert Flanagan. Hello. Hey. I've had a few uh, writing classes with them and uh, so we uh, know each other obviously. It's good to see you guys here. How have you been? Been okay. I'm kind of sick. Yeah. Also, I yawned right before we started rolling, and it made me look even more sick, I think. So that's good. I mean, I feel like I don't even know you anymore, but oh if yeah? you want to say we know each other, <laughs> that's What's okay. Happened? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? It's, it's been a while. Let's talk about uh, what do you like to write specifically. We took a fiction writing course together where we all wrote a short story. Uh, so I was wondering if you guys have both stuck to that craft or if you've moved on to longer works or even genres. Are you writing nonfiction? What have you been up to, Peter? Well, lately I've been writing a lot of nonfiction. Uh, I was studying abroad in Germany and during that time I wrote a lot of essays. Basically everything that happened that I thought, oh, maybe this is a significant event, I tried to write as an essay or at least record it and see if it came up as something good later. But uh, in the meantime, I've also been working on a novel. I'm about 30,000 words in, which is terrifying because I'm like halfway done with something. Yeah. Yeah. Robert? Uh, I don't really like writing things. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, like, uh, I like screenwriting a lot. Uh, I've written a couple short films. I have, I've written one full-length screenplay. Uh, it's full length, but it's like 110 pages. I guess mm -hmm. it's like kind of full length. Sort is of. that uh, we took a screenwriting course together? Is that the same one, or is it's it? Well, I have that one. That one's only like 50 pages. That okay. one I never finished. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's like I want to finish it, but you know, it's one of those things where it's just like I'm kind of bored with it. I guess now mm -hmm. I don't really want to do it. But mostly I write stand-up comedy because that's mainly what I do now. Like I performed at Green Gravel, and then I won Cab's like comedy competition. Mm -hmm. And then I performed last weekend at uh, Floodwater. And I just like communicating orally <laughs> a lot more than communicating with the written sure. word because I feel like I can express myself a lot better. Yeah. And then you have the immediate audience right there. Oh, yeah. To immediate let you know. feedback instead of like, oh, we're writing, we're writing, we're writing. Maybe in a few weeks someone will, I can force someone to read this. <laughs> And they'll be like, oh, it was well written. <laughs> yeah. Good job. And like, oh, thanks. Sweet. <laughs> like, no, I just go up there and be like, my wiener. And everyone's like, yay, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Man, yeah, you like that. Your wiener gets different reactions than mine, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's part it of happens. the craft. I, I think it's out. different because he's doing it on a stage. And I'm just. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't just go outside. <laughs> doing it in public. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah. Different. It's a different ball game. Yeah. Ball game. Yeah. Very, <laughs> very clever of you. Choice <laughs> words there. Yeah, I got it. Uh, so, Peter, you mentioned that you studied abroad in Germany. Uh, what specifically were you there for? An internship or? <laughs> no, no, most definitely not. Uh, I studied abroad somewhere. Took German before in high school, so I figured, why not? Mm -hmm. And it was interesting. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, how long were you there? Four, four-ish months. I mean. August to like, uh, I came back here January 2015 after spending like a few days in Ireland. So, um, I saw that you kept a blog while you were there. That yeah. was pretty entertaining to read. Like, Thank uh, you. I enjoyed specifically your, uh, you had your appendix taken out in Germany. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, I don't know if you want to recount what happened there, but. Well, actually, I brought that along to read later. But uh, what happened was I, I was hanging out with my friend Lacey one day. No, it wasn't even that. I just walked towards campus because my, and my stomach started hurting. And I could barely stand up and I could barely sit down. And I called this girl that I knew there and I said, hey, come get me. Just come be near me in case I die. Walk to, <laughs> <laughs> walk to her place. Girls love when you say that to them. I mean, <laughs> I got into her bedroom, oh, so. The, oh, yeah. well. No, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been the worst experience ever. So I, I'm barely standing, barely moving. Uh, eventually called a doctor, ended up going to the hospital, and uh, after a few quick taps to my stomach, they were able to determine I had appendicitis and took it out. Mm -hmm. So you were able to kind of 
keep a sense of humor about it in the blog. I remember you mentioning a doctor poked you. I was like, uh, there's a lot of you. Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, a big guy, so. Yeah, it was weird. Um, I definitely understood the whole time I understood this is funny. I was like, this is going to be great. Yeah. At the same time, I was thinking, I hope I don't die mm. or they don't yeah. mess up because <laughs> I don't speak German. At least I don't speak German well. Right. And especially since it was the first week of classes out there. So my German was terrible. I'm trying to talk to these doctors in English or in German and see what happens. And I, I, I knew it was going to be funny. It was just, it was, it was rough. If I wasn't laughing, I would have been crying, I think. So yeah. the way you diagnose appendicitis is you just like tap them? Yeah, it's... And if they go ow, you just... It's like a very open? specific, like if you get poked in the stomach, like if you get poked, right? Yeah. Like that's fine? It's fine. Yeah, yeah it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm fine, but um, you're like not like, Ugh, you don't have like an immediate reaction. Yeah, yeah. I, I was getting touched and I was just like doubling over. And oh, um, they made sure like, I mean, they tried like four sections of my stomach to make sure it was all right. Then when they got to the appendix, they were, it was done. They're like, okay. So Robert, do you similarly uh, draw from around you for your stand-up? Do you look for absurd moments or yeah. is it a lot of observations or is it thinking about things and how absurd they might be? Or? It's a lot of like recollection and observations and stuff. Like I do this thing where I keep a life journal where I try to like <laughs> recount like you know, years of my life, like, because, like, for a while, I was, like, I just, I would think about my childhood and realize I just don't remember anything from it until I started writing about it. I was, like, oh, fuck, I remember all these things. I remember 9-11. Yeah. That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, like, stuff like that. And I guess, like, w that's definitely something that I do. Yeah, of course, like, I draw from real life and myself because the worst thing, I think, are comedians who sit around and not, not that you just... If you just sit around and try to think of something funny, mm -hmm. you end up something that's kind of contrived and that anyone could say and it'd be kind of funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Almost like reading jokes out of a book or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like you calling it a life journal. It sounded a lot like you were going to describe a diary. Because when I think of life journal, I think of like a guy who's trying to hide that they have a diary. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I have a diary too, yeah. Yeah. I write in it every morning, but usually it's just long strings of vulgarity at this point, yeah, it's not a joke, it's just real <laughs> life. <laughs> that is life, yeah. yeah. So uh, I know when we were all in fiction writing together, you had a show at Public Space One, and Peter and I went to go see that. Public on a Space One? It was yeah. a, it, your buddy... Uh, Lev was there, he did a show. He, or, he had a puppet. He did a bit with his puppet. Oh, I hated that. That is literally the <laughs> worst gig I've ever done. Oh, really? It was at Public Space One, and it wasn't set up on the stage, first of all. It was, like, in front of the stage. Um, the audience, w there were about ten chairs set up in a sort of semicircle as far back <laughs> as they could possibly be from the front, all fluorescent lighting, and then there's, like, seven people just sort of staring at you, and there's no, like... Okay, here's Robert Flanagan. It's just Kurt like, hey, go up there and do it. It's just like, okay. So I go up there and do this material and just like, it's brutal. <laughs> it's like, no one, no one is down with it. And yeah. it's also the weirdest environment to do stand-up in. Mm. Did I did not like it. Yeah. Not, not to ask a question. No, go for it, man. Did you realize you were being heckled? By who? There were, Peter and I were standing there. Oh. And there was this guy, you told the joke of some kind, and then he was just like, whoa. And oh, then yeah. Peter and I like shot him this look like, what are you, this is a free show, what are you doing here? Yeah, I'm like, just over here like trying to do this thing my friend asked me to do. Like, uh, it, yeah, it was, oh, it was probably those guys in that band or whatever. Yeah, I, yeah. I've heard that that's kind of messes things up for stand-up is like, if oh. there's music also at the show, people come in thinking, oh, yeah. I'm going to go watch music, but... You know, if I'm gonna suddenly yeah. someone's doing I'd comedy, I'd be really great if awful. a terrified twenty-year-old came out and tried to talk about his wiener for what he thinks <laughs> is five minutes. Yeah, that would be really <laughs> awesome. If I saw that before a band. Plus, if I could just say it, yeah. the public space one crowd. I don't even think they like comedy. I don't even think they like laughing. Well, like I mean, like uh, not not all of them. Like Kurt and Dana, those guys are really cool. Yeah. But a lot of people go there just like I'm very serious. You know, all the time. I have a ponytail. Hello. <laughs> like, okay. Which is great because great. of what happens at Public Space One. I've gone in there and just seen like a wall full of dicks. And it's yeah. like, that's, that's an art show. 
and it's like all these differently drawn dicks. Yeah, that's like, what happens when you don't have a sense of humor is you start doing stupid shit without realizing it. Yeah, yeah. and then you're like, oh no, this is highbrow. Yeah. This is art. <laughs> really highbrow. Yeah. Don't laugh at the penis. It's not meant to be laughed at. It's a part of you. Yeah. Um, so, Peter, I know that uh, when you and I have talked about writing, you gave me advice on how it's important to write about things that make you uncomfortable. And I know that's something that you've really been interested in. I don't know if you want to talk about that some more. Well, I had this, uh, this professor in Ireland, I know you had him too, Mr. Roper. And Mr. Roper always told me to uh, focus on things you didn't want to talk about out loud. And we mm -hmm. always had to read our stories to the people in our group. So we're having these uh, workshops, and we have to read them. So we're going through, saying it all aloud, and people are judging us, people that we see every day. And that really got me to understand, like, they'll laugh at it. Like, people that you know will think something's funny if it's really strange. They, like, not all everything, but if you write about um, a story I wrote about in Germany that I never put on my blog because it was a girl that I knew well, was a time that I had a, uh, my penis didn't work when I was going to have sex with this girl. And it was, it was, I mean, it was a cool night except for that. And uh, at the time that it was happening, I knew it would, was going to be funny, which was terrible to, to just have this terrible problem and I'm going and I'm like kissing this girl and I'm like, no. I had, I had the exact Costanza moment oh, where yeah. I took this German, <laughs> this German condom and it's this white condom and it said ice, E-I-S. And I look at it and I look at it for a second and as soon as I realize that I'm reading it and trying to comprehend it, I go, oh God, because that's when my mind is off of things. That's mm -hmm. when I'm not focused. And then I go to tear it open and I'm just, oh, just horrified because everything's not working, you know? Mm. You try to slap yourself in the face, slap yourself other places, it won't work. I wrote that, and that was probably the best thing I wrote in Germany, and I couldn't put it up anywhere because everybody knew who, yeah. <laughs> who that girl was. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's the kind of story that people want to read because people can relate to it. People can relate to terrible, awful times. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you say, Hey, do you have anything that, you, uh, that you're embarrassed about that you did like 10 years ago that you remember suddenly and it just ruins your day? Mm. Of course. People want to know about that. Uh, do you similarly uh, go for things like that, Robert? I know that you know, just shock humor isn't so popular. That's almost maybe looked down upon, just saying obscene things. Uh, I don't really say obscene things. I say fuck a lot. But like, I don't think the material I actually have is actually obscene at all, really. It's mostly just kind of like absurd or from my life, you know? Yeah. So like, I, I, that's another thing I don't like is, I, I'm in a stand-up, I'm in a class right now where we kind of write stand-up bits and share them with each other. And there's this one guy where every joke he writes is just sort of like a, like a little twist thing where it's like, you know, so uh, you guys ever like, you know, wake up and then you're like, man, I hate faggots. And it's just like, oh, God, geez, it's so gross. Like, mm. and, and what that guy doesn't realize is, like, you're not super edgy for doing that. You're, like, one out of, like, ten people at any given open mic who's just like, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to yell faggots. And they're going to think it's so funny because it's so shocking. And it's like, it's just dumb, dude. You're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, uh, yo, I have this grade A joke where you never guess it. At the end of it, I yell the word rape. Watch out, guys. <laughs> really edgy right now. Like, hmm. Has nothing to do with them as like a character or their life or anything at all. It's not funny. It's dumb. Would you say that's the thing that you've maybe learned as you've been doing stand-up is I need to make this more about me. I need to make it about something. I mean, it's always been about me. Like, I mean, that show... That show I did at Public Space One, that was all about a relationship I had just gotten out of. And like very specific stories from that relationship, which offended people, which I thought was strange because they were just true stories from my life, but that's fine. <laughs> like, Didn't you tell a story about you wearing like uh, long johns as, as like tights and going out? That was when I was like 19. That was, <laughs> that was oh wait, which... Oh, wait, we're talking about different shows. Oh, apparently. Oh, you're, talking apparently. About the, you're talking about when I was like 19 or like yeah, 18 it was, or something. It, was, it might have been. That was like the first time I did stand-up. Wow, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. No, that show was definitely a, like a combination of like things that I sat down and tried to come up with. Like, this will be funny, you know, and mm -hmm. things that were true to life, but I wasn't communicating very well. It's whatever. It's very easy to look back at what you did when you first started something and be like, oh, here's everything I did wrong. Oh, like, man. Yeah. Editing 
picking, I don't know how people keep the old things they wrote. Yeah. Because when people, when I look at something that I wrote like five years ago, I'm just horrified and embarrassed. I'm like, this is so bad. How did I do this? Why is my name on this? Like, I, I, I see that. Yeah, yeah. And you want to progress. You don't want to keep drawing water from the same well. You want to... No. Well, now I'm at this weird place where, like, I have this seven-minute set that I'm so proud of. It w I did it at Green Gravel, and people, uh, like, comedians I don't even know from other cities are like, you're really good at stand-up. I did it at that competition. I got first place. I won a big TV. It's like a trophy that plays movies. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did it this last, this last festival, and, like, I... I got invited to go drink with uh, the head writer of Comedy Bang Bang and the vice president of College Humor because they thought I was funny. But it's like, I have like seven minutes that are good and like 20 minutes that are like, this is whatever. And I keep going over it over and over again and I can't feel like I can't make it better. You know what I mean? But then it's like, what do I do? Just keep doing this seven minutes over and over again? You get bored of it. You know, like I'm sure you get, I don't know, do you get, you, you know how you get bored of writing the same exact essay over and over again, right? No, like, yeah, yeah, my life is such a repeat. Yeah, yeah. Every day is yeah. the same sad essay yeah, yeah. about the time my penis didn't work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my penis didn't work again. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should see a doctor. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if I was you, I wouldn't scrap it necessarily. Well, like, because all, com like, what I know is that, like, professional comedians, like, they have, like, a, ha a half hour. That's, like, that's their go-to, like, half hour. And they've had that for, like, y John Mulaney's been doing the same set for, like, eight mm -hmm. years. Don't use John Mulaney. I'm, so I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I think oh. he's very funny, but I would say he's, only, he, he, he knows he the jokes, jokes that he's really good at. And yeah. It's kind of But that's them. part of it, though, is getting really good at it. Like, Jerry Seinfeld says, like, you, uh, if you're not sick of your set, you're not working hard enough. I mean, you can laugh. At, like, Jerry Seinfeld now is kind of outdated, but he's, I he knows what he's that. talking about. Yeah. 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 I was thinking of him in the B movie. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, right? <laughs> that was a thing that <laughs> He was in. Yeah. He wore well, a guys, B costume All I'm saying is I want to get to a point where I can have my own B movie. Okay. You know? That's yeah. what I'm working Aren't we for. all? Isn't that where we're all headed? Yeah, we all want to be in a B-movie. <laughs> that sounds like my nightmare. Oh, my God. You, Successful enough to have a B-movie, and then that's it. <laughs> what about, like, a B-movie in terms of, like, quality? You know, like a grindhouse picture? I would love that. I'd yeah. be down. Yeah. Well, Why don't we do that now? It wouldn't be that We're hard. on TV. We wouldn't need that Let's much Let's just money. turn this into something. Like right now, <laughs> yeah. like a horror movie. Yeah. I wish you that we cut had my head off. I wish we had thought of this, so we had just effects. Ah, uh, we'll fix it in post. Yeah. yeah, that's that's her motto. Yeah, just add blood stains everywhere. <laughs> uh, so you mentioned uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, I don't know if you have any influences, or do you draw from wherever uh, movies and TV, or just specifically comedy, or mm. movies? Definitely a lot. But, I mean, in terms of, like, specific comedians, I would say, well, I really like Patton Oswalt, but I don't know if my comedy is like his. Like, I don't know who, whose comedy my comedy is like, mm -hmm. but who, who I really like is, like, like Louis C.K., obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like uh, Kyle Kinane. Uh, I, like, I like Hannibal Burris a lot. He has the perfect cadence in my opinion, like I want everyone to talk to me like how Hannibal Burris talks all the time. That would be great. Is um, that? Did you see a set here? I did, yeah. Was it was so okay. Sad. It was okay. I don't know. He didn't seem on his A game that night. He's kind of phoning it in. Did you see uh, Carmen Esposito when she was here? I for didn't, her? but I have a funny story about that. Uh, my friend John, the, the head of Mission Creek, uh, mes messaged my friend John. He's like, hey, do you know any like female comedians? So John messages me because I know a lot of comedians. And I gave him like my top three female comedians right now. And I said Cameron Esposito is number one. And he sent that to him. Uh, a few days later, they booked Cameron Esposito. I'm just saying, I think, no, I, just <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I just keep telling that story, being like, I got Cameron Esposito. I. I, I got her. I don't see why Robert you can't Flanagan. not take credit for that story. I, I mean, mean either. That's what I'm saying. Not to yeah. one-up you, but you mentioned Patton Oswalt earlier. Yeah, yeah. Did I ever tell you about him working out at my gym in California? No. I think you Wait, told me this. Hold on. I told you it's a good sounds like a lie already. It's, it's totally not a lie because I told Mark to this before. <laughs> yes, he, he does go to the gym. I went to a gym, the Toluca Lake Tennis Club in uh, Toluca Lake, California. It's this ritzy tennis, tennis club. I go there to work out with my trainer. And uh, I went in and I saw Patton Oswalt. And I'm like, okay, you know, and he's like super tiny. He could fit in my pocket, you know. <laughs> yeah. And um, he's kind of working out, I guess. And uh, then my trainer takes me outside to run up and down these stairs. And I go to do it and I'm huge and I'm sweaty and I'm like, <sighs> you know. And Patton Oswalt just suddenly pops up 
through the door and walks past me. He says, excuse me, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. And I'm like, okay, what? And then I run up, run down, and like right before I'm gonna run down, he comes back and he says, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, okay, you know? And then I go to do it again and he gets in my way again. And he just starts just completely just apologizing like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm standing there and I didn't say anything to him because like for one, that's Patton Oswalt. I can't be like, dude, like, could you stop? What are you, where are you going? Is he doing a bit? No, he was just in the way. <laughs> Sounds like he was doing a bit. <laughs> I wish funny. I was. I wish he was doing a bit. Maybe he doesn't go to the gym to work out. He just goes and he gets in people's ways. He goes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he goes to aggressively bother people. Yeah. I, I hope so because that was that was just weird because I was I was like oh hey I know I kind of met Pat Oswalt today. How he got in my way at the gym. It was fucking terrible. <laughs> Uh, Peter, you mentioned you are working on a novel. Is that uh, something, now you, you've got to get this one out of the way first, of course, but is that something you'd like to continue with with other books, or would you like to maybe go back to shorter or maybe nonfiction? Or? I think there's a, lot, there's a lot to be said for finishing something long. It's, it, you get tired of things so fast, as Robert said, and if I was just able to knock this down, if I was able to get 60 or 70,000 words written about the same subject, that would be a great time. I would be very proud of myself, and I think that's what I'm trying to do, just to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to continue doing that if it's successful. I think there's something to be said about short stories, too. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing that I've liked, uh, I recently read I Pass Like Night by Jonathan Ames, and that was a novel that was written in the form of like a bunch of different short stories. Mm -hmm. They're all about the same character, and they're all actually related the same time period but each one of them could act individually as a short story a lot like uh, Dennis Johnson's Jesus' Son mm. so I'd like to try that and I keep thinking about it which is terrible because I'm like no you gotta focus you gotta finish this so you do can the move one on. thing then yeah, move on you gotta do something before you can go and try to do everything else so. is there something that you've learned about doing this longer work that maybe surprised you or that's definitely different from a shorter piece or is it just kind of, you gotta keep yourself going? Planning. planning. I, uh, I never thought about writing a novel in terms of having to plan things out, which is silly to some people, but when I took this novel writing class with uh, Professor Venice Berry, who actually has been helping me write this, um, she was like, have an outline, have a chapter outline, have each of those be pretty long, be able to explain exactly what's gonna happen in this chapter and why that's significant. And um, that helped because, I mean, it's, it's tough to just sit down and crank out what this is supposed to be exactly. So having a guideline helps a lot. I know, Robert, you said you, you're mostly doing stand-up, but uh, you've taken classes still at the university. Have you written uh, short stories or anything still? Not really, no. Um, I guess I'd like to get back into it. I just don't see, m I'm trying to put most of my energy into something I see myself actually doing at some point, mm -hmm. where it's like, I like stand-up comedy, I like screenwriting. Maybe at some point I could like get a like a writing gig on some show. Like that would be excellent. Mm -hmm. That would basically be my my sh my goal right now. As you know, I mean, basically I'm planning on being poor forever. <laughs> and then if that happens, that's like a nice surprise, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, not really. I don't know. Maybe it, then again, it's something I'm starting to already like feel the. Like it's been so long since I've written something that wasn't in like screenplay format that I've already like losing my grasp on like prose. Sure. It's very scary to see. Mm -hmm. It's just like, God, this sounds like an idiot. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. something Can't, similar like, happened to me. It's weird. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut oh, you no. off there. But um, uh, when I, I also went to Ireland on the Irish writing program, and it's all prose there. But before then, the entire year, I. I took two screenwriting classes, so I was just used to doing that. Yeah, and it's so nice because it's like you want to like he's in this place. It looks like this. Okay, now shut up. They're talking. <laughs> yeah, you know I love that. It's, it's not so like much nicer. No, so this up the window dripped with some water. Blah. Like shut up. I don't care. <laughs> Condensation <laughs> builds. Yeah, I don't need that. <laughs> so I'm like shitting on literature now. <laughs> not what I'm trying to do, but yeah. which is too bad. You're very good at it. Um, I mean, uh, what was the story he had like about the can of beans? Yeah. It wasn't about beans. Post-apocalyptic yeah. world. It was about an old man who just had a hoard of beans that he ate. You can hear that at home and think, man, that sounds awful. What kind of asshole would write a story about some fucking beans? And look at Robert. 
but it was actually very good. Thank you. It's a good read. Uh, speaking of good reads, I know, uh, Peter, you brought something uh, to oh, yeah, read. Oh, yeah, I did. I don't know if how to set it up exactly because I don't know what it is, but maybe you want to... Well, earlier we it. talked about my appendix coming out. Yeah. And uh, coincidentally, I'd asked some people from Germany. I totally forgot everything I wrote there. I remember I wrote one really sad thing about how being Jewish was awful in Germany. If you're a Jew, don't go to Germany. It feels bad. But... Uh, I decided not to bring that because uh, I didn't think the atmosphere was right. I mean, we got the void behind us. <laughs> we do. <laughs> it, oh, man. Uh, don't even. I'll yeah. just put some tones underneath. Yeah, <laughs> dramatic tones. Fix it in post, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, no, so I, I brought in this story about getting my appendix out. In the first week of Germany, it was rough. So you want to read a bit of it? Sure. Cool. <clears throat> Finding out I had appendicitis took a series of doctors slapping me in the stomach. On my bed in my apartment and then later in an exam room at the Klinikum Lüneburg, a doctor would roll up my shirt, hold out their index and middle finger, and jab me in the stomach. They divided it into quadrants, slapping a quarter of my stomach at a time and didn't ask me if it hurt. I made an audible groan when they hit the sweet spot, the bottom right of my gut. They would poke in deeply, causing a similar reaction. Three doctors did this and each came to the same conclusion. The problem is likely in my appendix. Throughout this process, I was undecided in what outcome I was rooting for. I knew that it'd be better if I didn't have appendicitis, but there was, a small amount, uh, <clears throat> but there was still that small amount of hope that all this was sleep de depriving pain in my abdomen, that all this sleep depriving pain in my abdomen was just an intense need to pass gas caused by the shady and delicious pizza place Eddie and I uh, ate at just before the onset of my symptoms. Well, half of me wanted it to be something as simple as that. The other half wanted appendicitis. Did I get my appendix out? Well, I, I was going to say stay tuned, but you ruined it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, we'll fix that in post. Yeah, fix it in post. Uh, Robert, you told me that you didn't want to do stand up to an empty room, no, so I won't make you, <laughs> okay. but uh, maybe you want to tell us uh, where you'll be doing stand up next or if uh, you have any plans yeah, for that. I'm doing, uh, I do a, sh a showcase that's sort of bi monthly. Sometimes we skip a week. Uh, it's tomorrow at High Ground Cafe. Well, tomorrow being April 24th. Is that tomorrow? I have no idea. What day is it? Yeah, it is the 24th tomorrow. No, wait, tomorrow's Friday. I'm sorry. I'm ill and tired. Uh, the 25th, Saturday the 25th at High Ground Cafe at 8 p.m. We have uh, comedians who do jokes. And then uh, next Friday I'm opening up for Hassan Minaj, who is a, uh, he's a correspondent on The Daily Show and also a stand-up comedian. And uh, that'll be at the IMU at 10 p.m. Cool. Uh, Peter, uh, do you want to plug maybe anything where people can read your stuff or... I don't know if you, you plug your blog or uh, where people can find things that you've written well, at all. If you want to find me, I live in Iowa City. Okay. I'm very big and I wear red pants sometimes. But I, I guess if you want to find my stuff online, uh, the, bro the blog I wrote in Germany that I hasn't, haven't kept up in months is uh, peterdoesdeutschland.wordpress.com. A little bit of WordPress there. I didn't want to spend like $5 or whatever to get that licensed. Yeah, um, yeah uh, whatever. And um, I don't know, keep a look, keep an eye out for a book that might come out in two to three years, sure. Or you could read the hospital's website, uihealthcare.org. I write for that. <laughs> it, it, I, in, informative stuff there. Do you just write like the Papa John Pavilion is over here on the website? Or what do you oh my God, I write everything. Really? Just everything? <laughs> I mean, like really everything. <laughs> They were talking to me and they just realized I'm the only like web writer who just writes for the web. Yeah, yeah. So like I go through and I fix everything that everyone wrote poorly. Yeah. I write a bunch of new stuff. It's really funny, like people say like, oh, English degree is like completely useless or whatever. But like, man, it's weird how many people who are scientists can still be fucking illiterate, man. Just like I don't know how to spell anything or like you know, oh. all these punctuation and stuff. It's you ever have you ever been in a class where it's like oh who wants to read out loud and someone starts and you're like oh no this is gonna take forever <laughs> and like uh, yeah I mean we've been in those classes together yeah, which is true. weird because yeah, we took yeah. we took just English major classes yeah, yeah I mean there are a lot of times when I think the best advice we could have written was change your degree yeah it's true I think none of us were mean back then uh, do you guys have any <laughs> on that note? <laughs> <laughs> 
no, let's, let's end on a good note. Do you have any parting <laughs> words of advice or just any parting words you um, like to share for anyone looking to write or get into stand-up? Or? Yeah, it just like, don't listen to your parents. Don't be afraid to be poor. Also, you can be poor anywhere. Yeah, don't be such a baby. <laughs> That's my advice. I don't know. Uh, if I had advice, it'd be don't bury all those terrible times that you have down. Don't tell them to other people either because they're going to think you're a weirdo. Instead, take your embarrassing moments and write them down somewhere where nobody will find them really. But write them down because that shit has happened to every person you've ever met. And they also want to read about it. I don't know. It's a good point. It's relatable. Yeah, man. Okay. Well, thank you both for joining me on my first show. I hope it was a good time for you guys. I had a great time. Yeah. Awesome. I, mean, I think the gift bag really tied me over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a, a bowl of candy out there. Nice yeah. little jumping frog for you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that does it for this episode of Script to Screen. Uh, join us next time when my guests will be different people. <laughs> totally stole that.